Cinema Siren. Hi, I'm Cinema Siren. New release Trainwreck has the potential to raise Amy Schumer's status in Hollywood, adding her to a growing list of A-list actresses that can bank at the box office. She could be yet another comedian who can carry a film and still play multi-dimensional funny characters, proving audiences don't just want to see 20-something ingenues. But is this Trainwreck worth slowing down for? From the time their preteens, racist homophobic dad Gordon, Colin Quinn, has drilled it into the heads of his daughters Amy, Amy Schumer, who stars and also wrote the script, and Kim, Brie Larson, that monogamy is a poisonous, destructive soul crusher. Amy grows up taking that to heart, and as a successful writer for a tabloid magazine that seems like a smuttier version of Cosmopolitan called Snuff, working for Hell on Heels managing editor Diana, the compulsively watchable chameleon Tilda Swinton. She spends her time drinking away her feelings, fleeing her one-night stands just after sex, and cheating on her boyfriend. Her sister has gone the other direction, settling down with nice guy Tom, Mike Birbiglia, who I always love, whom Amy disparages routinely, to put it kindly. When Diana forces sports-averse Amy to profile the top doctor in sports medicine, Aaron Connors, Bill Hader, she finds herself falling for a guy whose positive traits and goodness are impossible to ignore. Being with him shows her she hasn't really been happy and has to decide if she wants to change and deal with her stifling commitment issues. Director Judd Apatow has always had strong, flawed characters in his films, both male and female, and also casts strong actors he seems to know will work particularly well together. He does so again here in this movie. Schumer, as star and screenwriter, brings just enough of her pitch black wit and edgy style she uses on Inside Amy Schumer to keep her current fans happy, like me, while bending just enough towards the usual trappings inherent in romantic comedies to make new ones. Her character is unapologetically sexual, ambitious in her career, and witty, all refreshing qualities to see in a woman on screen. She is, however, also blithely self-destructive. In short, she's someone almost all of us know. Be advised, this character is not someone you'll start liking in, at the beginning of the movie. At one point, when she does something particularly messed up, I leaned over to my sister and whispered, that is not cool. She responded, yeah, it's called train wreck for a reason. Schumer used much of her own life in the writing of the film, including an apparently spot-on portrayal of her dad, even naming the character after him. She has mentioned many times some of the more irresponsible and prickly aspects of her character reflect some of her own weaknesses. She talks about it here. There's a lot of me in every scene. There's no, there's no scene that I think couldn't happen in my real life. Uh, it's definitely exaggerated, but um, yeah, I, and I don't think there's, I'm not embarrassed about it. Like, I, and I think that's like probably going to be strange to some people, but it, it makes me feel vulnerable because it really is. It's not even like the sex stuff that I'm like, Ooh, it's the, the family stuff and the, the really putting it out there, um, about my insecurities and my fears and that stuff's all, it's all pretty real. Bill Hader has already shown in the greatly underappreciated indeed the skeleton twins, he can play equal parts comedy and tragedy. It's great to see him here as a leading man. Granted the character of Aaron Connors is a bit too good to be true and that this guy is worth changing for department. In real life, commitment phobes have to make do falling in love with fallible, imperfect partners that challenge them in ways beyond the need to question their own fear of digging in and doing the work. But this is Hollywood. And a sports doctor who talks down to Nabby and intimacy issues with LeBron James's bestie and wins awards from Doctors Without Borders is what leads Amy to self-examination. Well, who wouldn't? Hader says he loved working with Judd Apatow and here's why. He likes to write the script and get the script in a really good place, but he's a firm believer of when you get on the set and you're there and you're in your costume and you're on the set and you're with and you're whatever the vibe is in that moment, we gotta just follow that. And so the whole thing could get thrown out and changed. He wants to keep it. He likes just getting things in the moment. He likes feeling those moments where everyone is surprised by something that happens, you know. 
Tilda Swinton gets to play Barracuda Beautiful as a sort of lo-fi tabloid version of Anna Wintour, bringing narcissism to a new hilarious height. In a purely secondary role, she steals every moment on screen and it's clear both Schumer and Apatow wanted it that way. Here's Tilda talking about creating her look as Diana. I mean, the look was something that I, again, judge just said, go away and make something up and that you want to do and be and, and, and try on, which was a huge luxury. Um, and uh, I don't know, it just was something that tickled me. Frankly speaking, anybody, including you, you put on that much makeup, you put on a wig like that and you put on those clothes, you will look like that. And you can buy that look very easily and people do. There are lots of people out there who look like that, who are rocking that particular style. Sure. And it is true that I have never actually been up that path before, but it was, uh, you know, you got to do it once. Amy Schumer couldn't have been happier to have her in the cast. That's the, that's the the craziest casting. Never did I think that she would be into doing this. Um, yeah, Tilda Swinton, she, she it like frightened me how quickly I fell in love with her. Like she just, you can't be in the room with her and not be like, wow, she's so powerful and beautiful and strong and just so full. Like every moment of her on, on camera just felt so and you just feel so like carried by her if you're in a scene with her like you can't take your eyes off her um, and she was just like the loveliest person to be around. Brie Larson and Mike Birbiglia are winning as the two voices of reason and I especially liked the realistic relationship portrayed between Kim and Amy. Amy is both sweet and very cruel to her sister which proves yet another catalyst for her changing. Both their more playful and darker interactions are something most viewers can relate to and connect with, allowing us to hang in there and forgive Amy as her sister does. As actresses, they're also really getting great chemistry with each other. Amy talks about this cast. The cast is so crazy. It looks like a parody. Like you're like, oh, Tilda Swinton and Method Man, finally their vehicle. Um, we just got the best people. I, I just, it was all like our first choices. I wrote it. I wrote, I wrote in LeBron James thinking that we were going to get, and then he said yes. Like everybody said yes. And uh, man, that Judd Apatow, people want to work with him. There are other secondary characters that heighten the fun, add edge, and entertain, especially LeBron James. Although I'm one of those who wouldn't have known what he looked like before this movie. LeBron James talks about being in it. That was one of the scary parts at the beginning, you know. Um, you know, it was like, you're going to play yourself. I was like, okay, I can do that easily. I can just show up. Hey, I'm LeBron. I play basketball. I can shoot some jumpers. I can dunk. And it was like, uh, no. You're actually going to be Bill's best friend in the movie, and you're going to kind of be like a love doctor. So you got to patch things up with him and his girlfriend. I'm like, oh, so that means I'm going to have lines? Like, more than one per scene, it was like absolutely so. Uh, but it's been great, man. I had a lot of fun. Look for some hilarious cameos, the best of which are by Daniel Radcliffe and Marissa Tomei. Trainwreck, though still maintaining its predictable boy meets girl plot, brings back the rom com by centering story around a relatable, flawed character, sharp, sometimes raunch humor, and a believable character arc that hooks audiences into staying connected to Schumer's mess of humanity. Both Apatow and Schumer get kudos, especially from me, for adding a compulsively washable comedy with a woman we alternately hate, love, feel for, relate to, and cheer for. The movie's not perfect, and neither is Amy, but life is not about being perfect, it's about becoming better. That, and the potential for a number of belly laughs, makes Trainwreck a movie not only will slow down for, but stop and watch. I'd get on board this Trainwreck. A-minus.